the listening session is in order. Uh, thank you so much for showing up. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you, citizens. Uh, this is a listening session for the community, not a debate with the Alderman. And it's citizen input, whatever you want to tell us, whatever you want us to know. And each Alderman, if you can be responsible for your own notes, and I'll take notes also. And of course, Alderman Graf and Alderman Berg will probably take notes. 10.15, let's have a break for 15 minutes, and then we'll have one hour to go. And if any of the citizens want to talk individually to your alderman, perhaps during the break or after the listening session. And also, feel free to call your alderman at any time that you want to. We're televised for the benefit of the public, so we will treat each other with cordiality and respectfulness. Any citizens want to speak now, feel free. Or we will wait. It's simply a listening session, Dan. So whomever is here is here. Yes, of course, Barb. Can I stand up over here? Yes, please. Well, the microphone is on. So if you sign your name and your address there and tell us your name and address. My address is 1034 Superior Avenue, Sheboygan. And my name is Barbara Smith. And the only thing that I really have to say, I don't have much to say, is there is a lot of confusion within our community as to exactly where the police station is going to be decided to be. I hear Sheridan Park is no longer an uh, option. Right. But there's quite a bit of people that I speak to at work or in play that say, do you know what, what are the sites exactly? Really, nobody has any clue as to whether it's the 23rd Street site, which I hear a lot of people saying that that's where they would rather have the police station. That would be a good site. That seems to be um, the one option that the citizens really enjoy. But as far as the rest of the sites, I really have no clue. And a lot of the citizens do not either. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. General. Alderman Graf, why don't you say that? Thank you, Madam Chair. The, the sites that are, are, are available right now, we're considering, sitting, considering five sites. There's um, the 23rd Street site, which you already mentioned. There's a site right behind City Hall here that is also um, being considered. There's one on 15th and um, Broadway in Georgia. Basically, it's a Vandervaart property. And there's uh, one, uh, a site down on um, New Jersey Avenue, right across from the Municipal Service Building. It's where the old drop-off site used to be. And the fifth site is um, the, oh, Penn Avenue and, and 13th Street. OK. That makes it quite a bit clearer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Barb. Yes, please. Thank you, Jack. Okay, my name is uh, Jack Lewis. I um, guess I have to sign my name. Is yes, please. Signature or just print? Simply so we can read it. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, 311 Michigan Avenue. Um, <clears throat> I, I commend the council uh, and management uh, for this uh, public hearing. I think in, in my 35 years in Sheboygan, I think this is the second public hearing you've had. And I think the first one had to do with the, uh, um, was very con uh, controversial also, was the uh, ambulance uh, problem. And um, that went on for a long time like this one. But um, one, one thing, I, uh, I haven't been going to a lot of meetings because I have a lot of things to do and um, uh, a little overextended right at the moment. And, uh, but I, I read everything I can find and also listen to reports and listen to some of the aldermen that I get to talk to. Um, I don't hear any vision coming out of, of, this, of this body. And it may be, but I don't see, I don't hear it. And I, I don't read it. What I'm, what I'm talking about is 
I have the, I have the impression that uh, we're thinking of uh, these little sites for today. Uh, the only one I see but is not being thought as a site for the future is the 23rd Street site. Uh, the police wanted the Sheridan Park, which was ridiculous. Uh, it, would, it would have been fine for today, but uh, um, uh, for the future, you don't know where you're headed. You don't know what the police department's going to look like 10 to 15 years from now and what your territory will be. You could be expanded. You don't know. You, don't, you, you can't vision that. And no one is. I'm a visionary. I get myself in a lot of trouble being a visionary. I've been one all my life. In the corporate world, I really got in a lot of trouble. But um, really, I think you have, to, you have to have a vision here. And uh, you can't think of just today. And, and assuming that what you have today will not be what you have in, in 10, 15 years from now, the only site I see that could allow you to adjust to other changes is the 23rd Street site. And the reason is that the, all that land there, and say the sheriff's department doesn't want to share. I mean, they're going to be sharing. Uh, uh, one thing I just read about uh, this morning, one of the clippings I had was uh, the, um, about uh, evidence room or something, uh, where the two departments wanted to share. On New Jersey, why New Jersey, for crying out loud? If you're going to build on a, a multi-acre site, you don't use all that site. You can build a facility that will, you, where you can join your whatever you're trying to put together. I think it's an evidence uh, room. So uh, uh, I think you have to, because uh, you could conceivably, I don't know where we are today. I, I was involved with the Police and Fire Commission for 18 years and president for 17 of the 18, I think. Um, uh, if, I, if I had still been there and they came up with the Sheridan thing, they would have heard how we felt uh, about that, because that's to me, was ridiculous. Um, it was uh, putting themselves in a position where they don't have to expand or share. Um, I think they have to think of those things. Um, I think it's an ideal location. In case you have to expand, it's ideal even if you don't expand. But if you have to, you have access north and south where you would be needed north and south. You don't know what's going to happen up to Haven area. You know, you, you, you can't picture that today. But uh, Whistling Straits could be a very large facility area for condos and everything else in the future. But you don't know. You can't see that, but you have a man who owns that area up there who is a visionary. And uh, visionaries sometimes think the same way. And uh, it's possible. It's conceivable. You will see many condos. Um, you will see other things happening with the sewer system. They're by themselves up there. They don't have one. They're going to have to either go to Cleveland or down here. Um, that's, that's their alternative. And, uh, but uh, he's thinking in the future, quite a ways in the future. I don't see that here. I know, and I'm not being critical because I don't sit in your meetings um, and I don't have privy to a lot of you know, people who, who know. And, uh, but if you, if you are not looking to the future, I think you have to. Uh, you could have a metropolitan police force for example. That's crazy now, but it could happen. I've been here 35 years. Um, we have been here 35 years. And um, this community has changed tremendously in 35 years. Um, and looking ahead, I, I see things, you know, I vision things, you, maybe you're not. But that's why I say I think you have to really consider tomorrow, not just today. And I think the only site you're looking at that takes you into tomorrow is 23rd Street and no other one. So uh, I, I should get off. And
I've spoken my piece. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Thank you. Anybody else that needs to give us some information? It's quiet. Thank you, Ed. Sure. Otherwise, we'll just wait. Yeah. There. Yes. My name is Ed Wachowski, and I live at uh, 2632 North 8th Street. Ed Wachowski, would you spell your last name for us, please? Uh, yes, W A C K. O W S K I. Just the way it sounds. Thank you. you no, know, first of all, I want to applaud you for holding this session. And I want to caution you not to believe, because there's not too many people back here, that uh, people really don't care about the police station. I talked to a lot of people on the street, and they are concerned about the police station. They're concerned because they feel that police do need a better facility. What concerns them more than anything is the $17 million and how you chose $17 million to build a police station. And I've been at a lot of your meetings and I'm at a loss to explain the rationale for that amount of money. Uh, but I would ask you to demonstrate the same leadership that you're demonstrating here today by offering people the opportunity to speak for or against the police station. Why not put that question on a referendum? Allow the people, the citizens of this community, who are going to pay that 17 to $40 million, because you obviously you know over 20 years with taxes, it's going to be a lot more money. And that's going to be a lot more money on their tax bill. Believe me, people are concerned. And if you want to have people very upset, and they will be upset whether they're here today or not when they get their first tax bill for $17 million. That's going to be a shocker to a lot of people. And I know a lot of people have said, especially in council, and the council members, we're tired of hearing that wait till election day and uh, we're going to vote this way, we're going to vote that way, we're going to vote the other way. Put that first tax bill prior to the next election and see how people will react, okay? And they will react, and they will hold you accountable. Also, you're, you're destroying a bridge between the community and the police department. Do you think when you pay two or three hundred dollars more on your bill, on your tax bill per year, you're gonna really think very pleasant thoughts about the police department? I don't think so. I really don't think so. So I ask you, to put the question on a referendum. What do you have to fear? The school board put their $34 million request to the taxpayers. But they did one thing that I don't see you doing, and that is they went out and they explained to the public why $34 million, what it meant to them, not only to their children, not only to the future, of Sheboygan, but to what meant to them and their taxes. And they did a, an excellent job of convincing the people that it really was necessary to spend that money. And surprise, guess what happened? It passed. Do you lack the ability, the credibility, to put that before the taxpayers? Step forward, lead. If you don't, then don't be surprised by the reaction of the people in Sheboygan. And I've heard a lot of people, we're circulating a petition asking for that, and a lot of people from outside the city come to the different concerts and things. You should hear what they say about Sheboygan. Yes, I lived here once, but I can't afford the taxes here. Okay. Yeah, I come back and I take advantage of your concerts, I take advantage of your restaurants, but I can't afford to live here. Would I have moved? No. I would have stayed if, if taxes were where they should be. I thank you very much for listening to me, and I ask that you not let the words fall on deaf ears. 
because also the word on the street is, why come here today? Because you guys have already made up your mind and you're going to do what you want to do and you're not going to listen to anybody. And the people that I talked to, I assured them that with the new leadership in City Hall, that that's not a fact, that you do listen. And I hope you demonstrate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed Wachowski. Thank you for, for your words. We have a few more people arriving. If you'd like to say something to us, just step to the podium, sign your name, and we'll eagerly listen to you. All right. I hope not. Good morning to you all. Good morning, uh, Carter. Could you sign your name and your address and tell us also? Sure. I hadn't planned on speaking. I'm glad you're going to. Um, I thought I'd give the young lady time to get her breath. I um, obviously want to support what uh, Mr. Ed Wachowski said this morning. Uh, he spoke the truth. Oh, Carter, could you tell us your address, please? I'm sorry, 414 Erie Avenue. Thank you. You're welcome. As I said, I hadn't planned on speaking, but I'm trying to give the lady a chance to catch her breath. Uh, I really wanted to support what Mr. Wachowski said. I have been... Um, <coughs> Probably a little bit discouraged uh, by the comments that I have heard uh, from uh, or about some of the aldermen, and I don't really want to get into that other than to uh, ask you to take off the blinders and look ahead and think ahead. I think I caught the end of the first or the second gentleman before. Um, before Mr. Wachowski and uh, asking you to look into the future and to think of the future. Uh, where I'm coming from, obviously, is I think that I support the 23rd Street site. Uh, some of the things that have uh, disappointed me is uh, hearing some people on the street uh, that a rumor may have been started uh, that something was so, and then we find out the truth, and it wasn't so. But people have a difficult time uh, changing their mind or accepting the latest amount of information. Yet we sat here and we listened to all of the uh, presentations by all of the studies and the architects uh, that made these presentations, and there were facts that came out, and yet they seemed to continue to ignore them and whether that's carried into the council or not, I really don't know, but I think that we've got to get over this blind stubbornness on the part of some of the council members. I think that you've got to serve the public. That's what you are here for. And not just play word games but really and truly speak for the public and for the benefit of the future of this city. And that means that you have to take off the blinders and you have to start thinking outside of the box and you have to start thinking ahead. And I don't think pulling numbers out of the air is one of the solutions as far as costs and expenses are concerned. And this has already been expressed and will be expressed further in the future. There has been, for some unknown reason, a difference of opinion as far as whether there should be shared services, and yet 
You are continually being advised, told, suggested, implored upon to exercise an open mind and start using shared services. And I think that one of the major breakthroughs recently, which is in the paper this morning, about the fact that the Sheboygan Police Department and the Sheriff Department are now going to join in a shared service in a very real, economical, and viable way with the decision to have your uh, evidence storage and your police uh, uh, shooting range uh, started at a new location and adequately uh, put together and in a very excellent location with no cost to the taxpayers in purchasing land or buying land. And you have the same story essentially now on 23rd Street site. So there is a force on one side that definitely wants to share and we have to open up the gates and get to the other side to open up and share also. And this council holds the purse strings. So you need to spend the money wisely. And just picking numbers out of the air is not the solution. You need to have concrete information. And as a previous speaker said, you need to share this information. There really and truly is some intelligence leaking into this council. And I hope that it continues to do so. The public is watching, not just a few individuals, but the public. And you need to perform for the benefit of the public. So again, I guess I'm saying I support the 23rd Street site for the very common sense reasons. And I hope that you, uh, I applaud you for having these open sessions. I think I'd like to make another suggestion. You might even consider having an open session and or a forum session, not only at the beginning of your proceedings, but at the end. You might find out some real truths at the end also. So think about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carter Paulus. Yes, please, at the podium. Name, address, and then if you'll tell that information to us also. My name is Barbara Tushinsky, T-U-S-Z-Y-N-S-K-I. I reside at 2404 Silver Leaf Lane, the city of Sheboygan. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess I'm here for more um, answers rather than questions. I do have some comments to make. We do not subscribe to cable, so I don't have the opportunity to watch this, these proceedings. I'm quite often tied up in other meetings on Tuesday evenings, so I can't get to some of these meetings. But I do subscribe to the Sheboygan Press. And unfortunately, the Sheboygan Press has not done the optimal job of conveying the discussions that are being held. Uh, the press has been pushing one particular site. There have been times that I can hear information on the radio the next day and realize some discussions that were going on in these chambers that were never covered in the press. So I guess what I'd like to do is just try and get some information from some people here. Um, I got one of the, some of the articles from the press. So from what I understand, right now there are, is it five sites that we are seriously considering? The five kind of sites are being investigated, yes. Okay. And what kind of information are we using? I mean, a few months ago when we had the huge political turmoil, there was the study from the, uh, called the Moyer study about the review of the proposed city of Sheboygan police facility. There's also the Zimmerman study. May I just ask, what is this, the status of this study? Is this being used to help determine site locations? All of the information is being used to determine site locations. And some of the other developments are that the, the city planning department has been involved and the city engineer department has been involved. 
and the police have been involved, so there's lots of input. There was also mentioned in the paper a possible study that would be available to the public today. Is that available or is it not? It is not available. It, okay. it has not come to us. Okay, so I guess then I'll start from the very beginning. Um, I'll lay it on the line. I'm on the school board. I have been on the school board for 10 years, so I've been through a process of having to make decisions, gather input, listen to the public, and be very well aware of everything that has to go into a sound decision. My husband is also a city of Sheboygan police officer. He's been here for over 30 years. So I'd like to think I might have some more insight into this than some other people, which is, I think, my main focus here. There have been a lot of people discussing the issues. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, between not being able to see the issues in person, listening to cable, or getting accurate information from the press, sometimes people do not have the information they need. Our common council members do. I can read something in the paper as somebody commented, here's something on the street, and realize that is just a small percentage of the information that's out there. So what I want to really tell the Common Council, if I may just tell you, if you don't mind, is please figure out what you are doing and why. What is the purpose of this building? I would like to think the purpose of this building is to create an optimal police department to best serve our officers and the support staff and this community in a cost-effective manner. Unfortunately, a lot of other issues have been thrown out in the last few years and few months as far as what the main focus of this is, whether it's shared services, whether it's preserving a certain site, whether it's going with people. Uh, this study was from people who don't even live in the city of Sheboygan. There are probably all kinds of political things going on I am not privy to. I'm just trying to remind the Common Council the main focus here should be using the experts who design police departments, using input from our police department and our police officers and our police chief to figure out what the needs are and work that way. If I utilize the city, uh, Sheboygan School District, we went out to some experts who looked at people who knew how to design schools. As a board, we have some ideas, but we're not experts. I respect all of you, but you're not experts in creating police departments and police buildings. The best way to do it is to listen to people who know the best. I do have some concerns about this study being used to a great extent. Uh, it's based on some inaccurate information. I know the Sheridan site is dead. I'm not talking about that. But the fact is that they used, they were comparing apples to oranges quite often. The purpose of this study was its impact upon shared law enforcement services potential. So they were trying to create a police department to the optimal effect of sharing services. If that is what the Common Council wants to do and the city of Sheboygan wants, then we better be sitting down with a county board and Sheriff Helmke to say, do you want to build a building that serves both of our communities? And from what I'm hearing, that's not the purpose of what Sheriff Helmke wants. This is the city of Sheboygan, the county's out there. Why they would possibly build a facility on 23rd Street or at the Vandervaart site or anywhere else in the city of Sheboygan to serve a large number of services makes no sense. They should be out where their public is. And people tend to forget that. And I, I don't hear a lot of dialogue between the people that actually use these services, whether it's the Sheriff's Department or the City of Sheboygan or the police officers. The police officers had almost no input into this. So that's why I'm hoping this is not held on equal ground as some of the other information that is coming out there. So my first thing is say, why are we building this? Whether you call it a mission statement, the goal, the purpose, what is the purpose for this new police department? The next thing would be, uh, what are the needs? I touched on that briefly. Are the needs truly shared services? I've, I also read the press this morning. The idea of sharing the shooting range, that makes a lot of sense. You can have shared services without sharing a building. I think there are a lot of people out there that are trying to be helpful, but they don't understand the way a police department works. They don't understand the way a sheriff's department works. Some of these shared services are not gonna be very effective. You get a whole different ball game when you've got people working out with something that's 18 miles away, <clears throat> and you've got one officer, one deputy working, trying to patrol a fairly large area where it's mainly farmland, versus the city of Sheboygan officer who's patrolling the seats, the streets here. The dispatching may not work. If we're truly looking at shared services, can we really investigate what the needs of these individual departments are and talk to the county board, talk to Sheriff Helmke and say, is this viable? The impression I'm getting is it's not, but again, you probably know about this more than I do. Then we have to really be careful as far as what the current site is. Um, one of the problems with relocating here at the city of Sheboygan is that there's not a lot of public parking and there's not a lot of parking for officers. Now, 
I have to admit, I told my husband last night, in all honesty, yes, because he's working right now, he can't be here. Uh, I said, I don't know how high a priority the, the Common Council puts parking for you, but in reality, when police officers come to work, they are putting their life on the line. They have to go through a rather difficult job day after day after day. I'd love to see some people who are out there discussing this ride along, whether it's a press, off, a press reporter or a member of the public, spend time in the police department building. I don't think they really realize the conditions of this building. It is an embarrassment. We have had officers leaving at great rates over the last few years because for 30 years they've been promised a new police department. People need to understand what's going on from a police perspective. When they talked about the location aspect, I, it'd be easier for me and my family to have it on the north side, be a shorter drive to work, you know? But in reality what happens is when a police officer is out patrolling, they have to constantly keep coming back to the central location, whether it's to book people, whether it's to report to their captain, whether it's to change equipment, whether it's problems with the squad. And this is the kind of thing you should be hearing from the police officers and Chief Kirk or Deputy Chief Weiss, not from me. But I'm letting members of the public know you may not have the perspective you think you do to try and help make an informed decision, such as the referendum issue. I have no idea what this is going to cost. I would think that if we gather all the information first, work with the architects and the specialists, we'll figure out an appropriate amount of money. I also believe in a representative form of government, which means we elected them. There are times that referendums are necessary. On the school board, we cannot spend a great amount of money without you telling us. We, <coughs> the state of Wisconsin put those shackles on us, so then a, a referendum is appropriate. If a referendum is appropriate right now or not, I don't know. I'm not even certain of the numbers that are banding about for a good police department here. So whether $17 million is accurate, I don't know. It sounds like a lot of money to me. Maybe it is accurate. I'm not sure. So where do we go from here? Uh, if you want my two cents as to where I think a good site is, I think that if we build here at the city of Sheboygan, officers will not have parking. That might sound like fairly, something fairly minor, but when you're out patrolling the streets and you always make sure you take your oldest car because you're afraid of vandalism or problems with your vehicle and you've got nowhere to safely get from your vehicle to your place of work, whether you're a patrol officer or whether you are support staff such as uh, a dispatcher and you're getting off of work at 11 o'clock at night, the rest of the city workers have a safe place to have their vehicles parked whether it's the firefighters or the other city workers. It's just one of those little things that I think means something to the people involved in this, in this decision, so I wanted to bring that issue up. So, for what I think might be a good idea, again, I'm not an expert on this, Vandevart seems to make sense. It's a central location. You've got a lot of land. That's my personal opinion. I've discussed this briefly with my husband. I'm not representing the police department. 23rd Street, I can't figure out what the story is behind 23rd Street. Uh, I think there's a lot of conjecture. I personally feel something's going on with the county that they want to get rid of that piece of land. Whether that's accurate or not, I'm just saying for myself, I'd be as careful as we can with that piece of land. I don't think it's the best location. Why would we want to be on that side of town when we've got so many people to the south side as far as response times? Because if something major is going on or the department is running short and you've got people down here at roll call, you'd rather have your officers distributed so they can more evenly get to the location of wherever the problems are. Vandervaart seems to make a lot of sense. Pennsylvania, from what I understand reading the paper, if that's accurate, you've got people already who are developing that property. I don't know if that's fair to them. Um, I have no idea if that's a good idea. I don't know if there are other locations you're truly thinking of and haven't come out of this. I would recommend not considering this current site. There have also been discussion about trying to use, I think it's the police garage, or having the police garage relocated at excuse me, and having some of the work done in the squad somewhere else. I don't think, again, people realize how often we have problems with squads. Somebody responding to a call, all of a sudden, transmission goes, the engine goes, things happen to these vehicles. They take some pretty hard abuse. Well, you wanted to hear from me, you heard from me. Thank you. But Thank you. May I ask, so now where does this go? How much input have you as a common council, I know it's on Committee of the Whole now, which, is that what you call yours, Committee of the Whole? I think it's terrific. I'm really pleased. I have to admit, I'm not certain why we don't have a larger representation of common council members here today, whether more will be filtering in as the morning goes on. I'm not certain. So now you're going to take some of this input, and you're going to get your study, correct? And you can discuss it, is it Wednesday evening? Wednesday evening will be another input session, okay. a listening session from the citizens. It's a listening session on Wednesday, again. What is your timetable? When are you thinking about making a decision? As soon as possible. 
does as that quickly mean, as possible. Within a week, or does that mean within the next six to ten months? Does anybody feel as if there's some information they need to still get before they can make a decision? I, I'd like to hear from more than Ms. Mondeme or from anybody mind. Okay. Okay. And again, the decisions you can make are only as good as the data that you get. So this data has been collected from people in city planning, department heads, et cetera? And the studies, yes. Okay. And the architect, that's what we're waiting for right now. Lots of information coming in. And we'll share all of it with the citizens of Sheboygan. When the original study was done, I believe it was by Zimmerman, they spent a fair amount of time talking to police officers. Since that point, I'm not certain how much time has been spent since we've narrowed down some of these locations. Have we talked to people, not just the police officers, the other people? Have we spent time talking to people who are going to work in this building? That's what happens, again, if I may use the school board. We had a pretty good idea of what a facility should look like. Then you go to the experts. Then you start to narrow it down, and then you go back to the people who use the building. So the last few months, we have had the specialists sitting with the teacher saying, where should the bathrooms be? What's the kind of lighting? What are the kind of colors? What's going to be an effective manner? to create the best environment for learning and for our staff, which will then help our community. I'm hoping that this is the kind of thing we're going to be doing as we start to narrow this down, talking to people who actually utilize these services and get some input from them. Is that going to be a major component or not? We have all of these studies that have been done in the past, and we also have the information from the police officers now. Yes, and as you said, the police officers had great input to the previous Zimmerman study, which is also being looked at now, in which Zimmerman is also analyzing for the new information. Thank so you. Zimmerman has all of that information from the police officers, yes. Uh, is Zimmerman then considered kind of the, the main architect? Are they the ones we're using for making lines of decisions? We have the contract with Zimmerman. Okay, so we're still utilizing their services. Of course. Okay, thank you. And I hopefully I'm going to sit around for another few hours and listen to a lot more people talk. Please do. <coughs> thank you. <coughs> Henry, would you sign in and also sure. tell us your name and address? Sure. My name is Henry Capitello, and I live at 1619 North 38th Street in Town Sheboygan. The reason I'm here, though, is because we, well, the company that I work with owns a building here in the city of Sheboygan, and we do pay uh, quite a bit of property tax. First of all, I'd like to thank the aldermen that are here because I feel that you felt that this is an important issue and you needed to hear from the uh, citizens of Sheboygan here. And again, I thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, a lot of you probably do know me already and you know that uh, the majority of the time that I come to the council floor is because of fiscal accountability. and to make sure that uh, our elected officials are looking out for the taxpayer, okay? And the reason I say this is because as a nonprofit, you know, we really can't afford a lot to pay for property taxes. Uh, and we have paid for since we acquired the building. We continue to pay. Um, I don't think there's any other nonprofits within the city of Sheboygan that do pay property tax. Uh, that's a whole different issue. but. One of the reasons that I think that you, or one of the main focuses that you should be looking at is making, making a sensible decision on the money that you will have available to you. And the reason I say that is the trend now from the federal government, I mean in everything that you look at, the federal government is, is sending less money back to the states. A prime example, there's an article in the paper today in the Sheboygan Press where Homeland Security funds last year were 37 million. This year, we are going to be receiving $10 million. Now that is a dramatic drop in the money that we would receive from the federal government. And that's not only in that category, but in a lot of the categories that states receive money back, it's less and less money. If you look at what the trend at the state level is, 
you're looking at they're now looking at passing legislation that would limit the amount of property tax that could be raised within a municipality. And the reason they're doing that is because they feel that the taxpayers need to have some kind of relief. And when you're looking at this, keep this in mind, that you're getting less money and from the federal government, from the state, and the, uh, the amount that you'll be able to raise, the debt load that you already have, um, it's my understanding that uh, the 17.1 million, that if, if this is what you're going to be spending, that that would bring you up to your, your uh, limit of 3%. Um, you would not be able to do any more borrowing. That literally just, there's nothing that you can do then. Um, you know, when you think of this and you think of how much money you're going to be spending, keep in mind that that's what's going to happen. There, there may be some other things that you may want to do, and I would say one of the priorities may be when you have the police station is hiring additional police officers. I mean, where are you going to get the money to be able to hire more police officers if you're already at your debt limit already? Uh, I was here for the last two years when I remember there were two police officers that you were trying to get on, and there was a freeze on hiring and how long it took to get a police officer on the street. If you're looking at, at that and going through that same uh, problem, um, I'm thinking keep that in mind when you're looking at the cost that you're spending because um, you need to have police officers out on the street. And as much as the city is growing, that's one of the issues that I think you're going to be looking at. And when you have a bigger facility, that might be one of the, the other things. You look at the different sites that you have, I think that you look at what the costs are associated with that, and like I said, for fiscal accountability, my recommendation would be that you keep that in mind and that be one of the driving forces behind the selection of a site. Um, you know, the taxpayers are paying the taxes that are gonna build this facility. <coughs> and if you're looking that they can't afford it, you know, there are certain people that are on fixed incomes that are just right now, you look at the price of gas, you look at uh, heating fuel, I mean, it's just absorbent. So if you look at the site, for example, uh, the Vandervoort site, apparently that's 19 acres. 19 acres, when I remember, I think when the police department was here, um, Captain Kirk was here, and you were looking at Sheridan Park, um, the size of what they were looking at. I, I remember it was first four acres, and then now all of a sudden it was feasible to build at Sheridan Park, which would have been less than that. And then all of a sudden now, for whatever reason, you're looking at a site that's 19 acres, which is almost, if you're, if you're looking at it five times the size of what you originally had anticipated, um, what is the rationale behind that? Uh, you're looking at that, you know, there was concern about environmental issues at the 23rd Street site. Well, I would imagine the Vandervoort site probably has the same issues that you may look at. Right now, the present owner of the property is responsible for any contaminants that are there. The minute that the city takes possession of that property, you are now liable for that, for the cleanup of that property. You're the ones that are going to be spending the money that it's going to take to clean that property up. Um, in addition, I think that uh, that would mean an additional $1.7 million for the acquisition of that property versus like the 23rd Street site, which to me, when you, when you, when you have such limited dollars and you're looking at, at being more cost effective, you're going to spend another $1.7 million more on a site versus another site. And again, I, I, I don't know if, if, if I'm correct, but it's my understanding that the $17.1 million does not even include land acquisition. Doesn't include the land acquisition. So if that's true, how much is that site going to cost the city in addition to the, the $17.1 million? Um, there's talk about $2 million. So does that mean now that uh, instead of $17 million, you're up to $19 million? Um, those are some of the issues that I think that that site in particular are, are, are alarming when you're looking at the, the, uh, the cost that you have associated with that versus some of the other sites. Um, and sure, you know, 
if if this if the city council was, was was saying, well, you know, we're looking at that site because you know what, we want to do a lot of shared services. We're going to do everything as much as we can with the with the uh, sheriff's department with with the county. But you know what, I don't think that's true because I read in the paper today where you now are going to be looking at shared services with the shooting range, but apparently it's gonna cost the city and the county $850,000 to build a new building to house that facility in. It, I, I thought I was under the impression that when we were talking about the police station that that shooting range was already built into that cost and that was in there. If it isn't, then I would imagine that if you're gonna spend $850,000 on this new facility, you should be reducing the cost of the police station by at least that amount because you now do not have a firing range in there, unless you're gonna have an additional firing range in there also. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that you look at, and if you're looking at shared services, I think to the taxpayer, when I think of shared services, I think savings to the taxpayer, not more money to the taxpayer. I think the concept has been reversed here, where you're looking at shared services and it's gonna cost us more money. I mean, that just doesn't make sense. Why have shared services if the taxpayer is gonna pay more money for that service? Um, you, you know, you, you look at some of the other items that you have in there. You have the, um, the uh, municipal garage that you, you're looking that's gonna be handling for the uh, police station. That's gonna be part of it. Uh, it's my understanding that there's four maintenance garages within the city of Sheboygan right now. And, and the sheriff's department has apparently their own also. I mean, if you're looking at shared services, why not look at combining that and doing that as a shared service <coughs> and, and eliminating the cost? Or maybe even just <coughs> eliminating that cost from the police station and utilizing one of the, the, uh, the maintenance garages you already have. Uh, it's my understanding that that, that that ticket item alone is $2 million. If you look at eliminating that and, and using one of the existing facilities, sure, you may have to upgrade it, you may have to do some more things, but you're saving $2 million to the, to the cost of the construction of the police station. These are the items that I think that you should look at. And if you're looking at for cost effectiveness, I think that definitely you have to be working with the county. I, I think that that's one of the main main issues. And I think what I would like to see, and, and maybe that you can uh, uh, incorporate in this is, um, you know, there's a lot of taxpayers here. The city of Sheboygan has taxpayers that pay county taxes, and they, they look at their money being spent, and then they say, boy, I'll tell you, we need some people that really have some common sense there, because our elected officials, for whatever reason, keep spending and spending and spending. The department heads are looking that they, they want a new, new item and that's one of the things that, they, that, that they're gonna put in their new budget. I think that if you're looking at, at items like that, you, you, you need to, to look at what's gonna save money to the taxpayer. And the uh, 23rd Street site alone, if you're looking, for example, the, the money that you're gonna be getting from the firing range, if the county is willing to give you that $500,000 and they were talking about 300,000 out there in a trade-off and they're gonna put that into shared services. Well now, you're getting $500,000 in addition to that if you put the firing range in there and it's all gonna be incorporated in the police station and it's not gonna be a whole different facility. And you're going to have officers that are going to, to that, uh, that uh, facility there. And I think that you're gonna get more, more, more services that you could look at that you could share. And uh, as, as uh, a taxpayer, to me, when you're looking at spending two million on a site that right now is on the property tax rolls and is generating taxes, property tax for the city, and now you're, you're looking at a site that the county owns that is not on the tax rolls and it is not gonna cost the taxpayer any more money, uh, common sense may tell you that that might be one of the areas that you look at because it's gonna save money to, for the taxpayer. And 
if if you can negotiate, and I, and I know I heard some of the the uh, the, uh, the council members that, uh, and I know it probably is frustrating being in meetings and and realizing that there's talk about shared services, and then um, it, it it doesn't seem to materialize. But I think that if if you're looking at saving money and really doing things on shared services, I think that you really should sit down with the county. And not only the department heads, I, my recommendation is that you get some, some uh, citizens from, from the city and, and, and the, uh, the county that can be there and that can give their input also on how their taxes are being spent because they're concerned about the cost of the, the taxes that they're paying. And it, when you're looking at a department head or an elected official, that may, na may not be their top priority. So I'm thinking that if you want to hear from descending voices, that would be a good thing to get people on there. Um, as for the other site, uh, the, the one on Pennsylvania Avenue, as the previous uh, speaker said, there's people that are developing. That's another pri property that's on the, on the property tax rolls. I don't think you'd want to take that off, especially if it's being developed by somebody. And they're going to be increasing the value of that property. And it's going to be generating property taxes for the city. I don't think that's one of the issues that you should be looking at is removing property off the tax rolls. So that site, I think, would, would not be a, a good site. Um, so now you're back to um, the, I, I think the Broadway site is one of the other ones that you're looking at. But that again, you have, that's another uh, property that's on the tax rolls that you're going to be taking off and that's going to be reducing the uh, tax revenue to the city. So what I would say is when looking at all of this, keep in mind the amount of money that you're going to be spending and the cost to the taxpayer and to think in the future because what's going to happen when you reach your limit on borrowing and what's going to happen if, if all of a sudden there is an emergency where you have to borrow money. Um, I know that when the person that represents the city here for on the on the uh, the your bond rating, one of the concerns that they had was your reserve funds on hand and your debt load that you had, and that could affect your bond rating. Uh, if you keep borrowing the way you're borrowing, if you keep spending the way you're spending, and not keep a handle on it, I think that w what will happen is your bond rating will be affected, and what will happen is. It'll mean more money to the taxpayer because those loans that you have out there are going to be requiring additional interest payments. And the city, as strapped it is, as it is for money to come up with additional money, I don't think you can do that. So when you look at this and you, and you look at the sites, keep in mind the amount of money. I know it, it, at times you, you, you maybe lose sight and, and uh, Everything is, is going through there and people just want to vote for what's, what's, what's there. But when you think about it and you think what it's going to cost you and it's going to cost the taxpayer and what it's going to cost in the future for other things that you will not be able to do, those are the things that I think that <clears throat> should be critical in your, your selection process here. And keep that in mind because, um, again, I'm thinking that Priorities are that you should have some funds set aside just for the hiring of police officers. Just like you have money set aside uh, that, you, that you have there, that might be something that you may want to look at. And this could be in the, in the cost savings that you save on the police station. I would recommend that in, in future, instead of having to scrimp for money to be able to put a police officer on the street, that you should have a reserve fund, <coughs> fund specifically targeted for the hiring of police officers, and that that should be that should be left alone, should not be used, and there you could use that with your cost savings on the construction of the police station. So with that, I thank you for, for uh, the time and again for your willingness to come here and listen to, to us taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. And yes, you taxpayers. That, believe me, our Finance Committee Chairman, Jim Groff, is watching the dollars very closely. We take that into consideration all the time. And when it comes to the $17 million, our intention is it's going to be less than that and it's going to cover everything and it'll be very difficult to get Jim Groff and the Finance Committee to agree to spend that much money. Well, I know. So I, that'll give you some assurance and vehicle cooperation. Good idea. Thank you, Henry. 
I just wanted to say too, it's seventeen million dollars, and that's a cap that that we set, the council set and approved. It doesn't mean we're going to spend seventeen million. It's a cap that we put on it, taking into consideration everything that may be there. But we've already asked for certain things to be done, like downsizing and um, and other things that. Uh, we are looking at not spending the $17 million, but there again, it was just set up as a cap, so we knew where we were going. Because we don't know exactly how much the new police station is going to cost until we get all the estimates in, until we know exactly what's going to be built with the new police station and, and so forth. So uh, we've got a lot, but in order to, to put this out, to, to set what we may borrow, we had to, to come up with a number, and, and based on Zimmerman's estimates, again, the Cadillac was, um, I believe, like $15 million or $16 million, and uh, a lesser um, one. Oh, thank you. The, um, the Cadillac was $16 million, and a, and a lesser um, uh, police uh, facility would be about $14 million. And even that's going to be cut da down. Okay. Well, my concern is, and this is a proven track record for government, is. When you set a, a, a limit for government and for not to go over, they usually get right up to that limit <laughs> and they don't step over, but they stay at that limit. So that's the concern that I would have. But I know, Alderman, um, you have been uh, very, very resourceful on holding the line this past year. I know that uh, fiscal constraint. And I'm hoping that you continue with that, Alderman Groff. And I, I, the voters out there definitely want to see that. And I know that you have made your efforts over this past year, and I commend you for that. But definitely, you have to hold mm -hmm. the other alderman's feet to the fire to make sure that that you you definitely hold that to the the uh, most reasonable cost that you can. And that means in every avenue, even on when you start looking at selecting the uh, the, the uh, contractors and holding them to what they're going to what they're going to have to make sure that if you're going to have some overruns to make sure that they're as minimal as possible and if somebody says well I'm going to come in and I'm going to build this at this cost or I'm going to provide this service at this cost you in your own home if you had somebody come in and did work for you and then all of a sudden they said well you know what it it cost me double the amount that what I told you was going to cost you would probably have you know have a bird thinking well how can he think I can well I think that goes for the city too I think that you need to keep track of the money that's spent there and to make sure that if somebody comes in and says we're going to build it for this amount that you hold them to that amount and other contractors and and not just be so readily to say well okay we'll pay the additional dollars thank you henry thank, thank you. you and we citizens of sheboygan we who live in the city limits and pay these taxes we know very well that we have a giant job we taxpayers who live in the city limits are not wealthy people <coughs> We are not <coughs> flush with cash. And we support this city. It's our money who runs this whole city. The streets, the sidewalks, the police, the fire, the everything. Thank you. Uh, Marilyn, can I, yes. can I give you a 30 second parting shot? Because I of have to be somewhere. Of course you may, Jack Lewis. Go right ahead. Um, do, you're, you, you people are far ahead of where we were 30 years ago when this thing came up. We face some extremely fat egos in the county and city. The sheriff, the police chief, the county government, the city government, and, we, and the whole thing just blew up. You are hundreds of miles ahead of where we were 30 years ago. Keep up the good work, really. Uh, you're on the right track. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to give us some information? Yes. Could you sign in and with your name and address and also tell us your name and address? Okay, my name, my name is Neil Altman. I live at 2412 North 5th Street. Thanks. Uh, I've lived in Sheboygan most of all of my life. Um, my concern is this. I think uh, we, the people that run the city, I think we have to have a vision of where we're going and kind of look ahead and look at some, and we look at these sites, okay? And not too long ago, we were looking at a site where the Motel Imperial was, and we were so quick to want to 
pick up that property and use it, and now it's being developed into a, a nice office building, which is going to give us some nice tax revenue. Okay? I think what we need to do now, there's also a property, the, the Vandervaart property is a lot of, lot of land, okay? But look at it visionally in the future. 17 acres or 19 acres would build a lot of housing on that property. And we're, we would be giving a potential tax base, okay? And even the 23rd Street site. I work at Volrath. What if they decide they want, they own property next to that? What if they want to like, expand, okay? Uh, they could buy that property, okay? Uh, the Sheboygan Clinic may decide to expand. In fact, I understand they might, they might even build a new hospital. It may not even be in the city limits. But we would have to save that clinic. They would probably need additional land. So we should be looking at properties where uh, maybe they're not going to really, you're, you know, there's not a potential for a tax base. I think one of the places we could definitely use right now, I believe the uh, property on uh, 13th and Penn Avenue, I think is an ideal property. Not only uh, is it close, it's actually centrally located. It, it's uh, close to City Hall. It's also close to the uh, courthouse. Uh, I believe the optic lines right, run right down Penn Avenue to the courthouse. Uh, you have existing buildings within that block, okay, that probably with a little cosmetic work, okay, would be fine for evidence storage. Uh, there's actually some, there's a gasoline uh, storage there. Maybe the city could go buy and get, buy gasoline wholesale and save us some money, okay? But what I'm saying is we just have to, look, I think we have to have a vision of what's good for the city and because we can't expand to the north and south to add to tax base. It's hard because we can't, we can't annex everybody. We'd like, you know, and make it one big city. We can't do that. Um, so we have to look about developing uh, within the city, okay? And uh, I think we should look at probably the 13th and Pan Avenue site would be my, my thing. And also if you, uh, right now if you, and after this meeting, you wanna take a walk. What you do is you walk down here to our workers park. It's the most beautiful park in the city. But there's a lookout place there. And you just look out to the west. And I'll tell you what, what you'll see is you'll see some buildings where the weeds are eight foot tall, okay? You'll see some buildings that haven't seen paint in 20 years. The green building uh, looks like a palace compared to some of these buildings. Now, if we were to build in that area, uh, we could clean that up and perhaps even to the north of it where the old seed company is and some of those older buildings, uh, Maybe somebody would follow suit and start building in those areas as well because it would be near the police department. <clears throat> um, my only other thing is just have vision and, and move forward and have vision. Look ahead. What's best for the city and how you can do it. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Altman. Did you sign your name and address on that tablet there? Thank you. We've had some good comments. We've had some good input. We'll be taking a break in 11 minutes. And this is being televised. So the citizens of Sheboygan know that we are here, that we are listening. And then also remember, Wednesday evening, another citizen input right here. We'll listen to what you have to tell us. And I'm hoping Alderman Jim Graff will be there, because I hope to go to Chippewa Falls. <laughs> Everybody's going to just sit here. I'll talk again. All right, Barbara Tuszynski, go right ahead. Thank you. I, uh, this is, these have been really good comments. I've got a couple of questions uh, now that I know we're on TV. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> so maybe we can get a couple of questions answered. As I said, I apologize for not being as familiar with this as I should be. But 
the previous speaker has brought up some things I'd like to have answered, maybe other people who are not as familiar. I think many people here are very familiar with this. Uh, can we consider purchasing part of a site, the Vandervaart? What is its situation? If we only need four to seven acres, will they sell off part of it? Do we have an answer on that? I don't know. We received a letter. We received a letter from them that's being presented to council that um, mentions um, that they'd be willing to sell 15 acres. Okay. Um, and as yet, we don't know if they'd sell any less than that or not. But what's going to happen with this letter is going to be sent to the Committee of the Whole, and then we'll have them come in and give us a presentation similar to what the county gave us um, two weeks ago or a week ago, a presentation. And um, that's where the status of that is. So I know they, in their letter, they also said something about keeping the office building and another building, but I... You're well prepared, aren't you? Oh, well, it was in our documents here. Um, they said something about, let's see. Corporate office and sales center. Thank you. Corporate office and sales center. But the potential could be if, you know, it's politics, hardball, they know we want the land, they want to make sure they get rid of the 15 acres. The city of Sheboygan could then own some of that land in the future develop either for city use or to private developers, correct? For housing or some other, is, is that a potential? Perhaps. Okay. Um, another question. Uh, in the past, there was discussion with the 23rd Street site that there was going to have to be possibly a land switch and money put <clears throat> out. What is the status of working with the 23rd Street site? 23rd Street site is as originally agreed upon by the original building use committee, and we haven't gone further than that. We're simply going with the original tentative agreement and information from the first time round. It was a few weeks ago, I think there was a, um, I don't know what you call it, the motions that you make uh, to say, can we please reach out to the county and find out exactly what they're doing? Have there been greater discussions? Have you gotten more in depth with them? Or where does that stand right now? It, as the original agreement, that's where we stand with that's them right all, now. The, okay. Yes, they that's all, okay. Yes. They were here Monday. Yep. And, I, either I missed it in the paper, I've been out of town for a while. Did they say much one way or the other? Did they change the discussion or the tone? It's okay. The only change that no, was Somebody made. said, what is the agreement? Maybe if you can just refresh our memories. Well, there's, they passed, passed an agreement on the, the county um, board um, by 26 to four. 10. I don't know if it was four or six or something like that. But um, that agreement was to to um, sell us the, um, the land, from what I can remember. And uh, in turn for that, um, it was like $300,000 was the cash, basically, at that particular point in time. And the only ch thing changed with that is that instead of paying out cash, they would allow us to, to put that into a trust for future um, shared service development. And so, um, and they'd match it, but, um, the other thing is that there's a parking lot over on 7th and Penn that the city currently um, owns, and they would like that for future expansion of the parking at, uh, at or near uh, the um, courthouse. The city had offered that to the county as part of the original agreement. But we still are a little bit up in the air as far as what kind of cost there might be to develop at site because we have conflicting information from Zimmerman and from Moyer, correct? All that information is coming. Okay. Uh, but according to our, um, like Tom Holton, it, it should be minimal. According to the soil tests that they've taken already, uh, okay. they don't expect anything uh, major. Okay, thank you. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Thank you, Alderman Sagal. I'm glad you're here. Hello and good morning. morning. Tom Lubner, 1333 Clara. Tom Lubner? Yes. Thank you. Could you spell your last name, please, for us? L E U B N E R.
I'd just like to say that um, I'm in favor of where the place is now, expanding this. I know we need a bigger police station, but 80,000 square feet, that's probably 15 times what they're using now. What we need is a bigger police station, needed it for years. We do not need a police palace. Thank you. Thank you for your words. Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, any citizens who want to speak again or citizens listening to my words now, you're invited to come and give us information, give us your opinion. We're talking about the site selection for the police station. That's what our discussion is right now. or That's what our listening sessions are about right now, site selection for the police station. Um, in four minutes, would you like to speak in these next four minutes? All right. Yes, please, Henry. I just have one question. Now, the, uh, the, the microphone, please. Now, is the 80,000 square foot facility, is that etched in stone, or are you looking that maybe that it could be less? The, the reason I say that is to give the, the people in the gallery and also people at home uh, concept of how big of a building an 80,000 square foot building would be. Our facility, which is the old Anna Rice Home St. Nicholas Hospital that spans the entire block from 10th Street to 9th Street, that building is five floors and that's 92,000 square feet. So if you're looking at a facility of 80,000 square feet, imagine how big our building is and your building is only going to be 12,000 square feet less than that. So that is a tremendous building that you're looking at. Um, you know, the size of that, so that can give the viewers at home an idea of how big of a facility you're looking at. That's a very good eye picture. I thank you. And of course, not 80,000 square feet. Yes, Barbara Tizenski. Thank you for indulging me. That's what I was trying to figure out. The 80,000, is that from the, the Moyer report? Because I'm trying to figure, I forgot the page here, which says it'll be noted the finding of overall building size is approximately 80,500 gross square feet as compared to the 2002 study, which suggested 59,000. 59, where does the, the 80,000 figure come from? Was the 80,000 originally came from the Kimmy report and then was uh, tacked on to by the, excuse me, the um, 80,000 square feet originally came from uh, a Kimmy report okay. from like 2002, I think, or something okay. like that. And then, um, then also the Zimmerman report brought out 80,000, okay. using 80,000 square feet. Okay. And that was from the, the, there were 15 police officers that sat down and were interviewed along with uh, Chief Kirk. Okay. And uh, they came out with uh, a list of of what they'd like in their new police state and facility, and uh, that added up to 80,000 square feet. Thank you, and I remember one of my other previous questions. Um, in light of the potential for the shared uh, range, now was that range, or somebody had a really good point, if we're gonna be creating this range, will that then be subtracted from this site? Uh, is that a cost savings, or what happens with that? I'm, it would be subtracted from that site, because. Um, it did have it, I had a range in originally, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know how much of a cost saving it's going to be, except that it would not be part of the cost of the police facility. Okay. Um, Bill Stephan, you're gonna give us some information, right? Because yeah, we're not I'm debating gonna, with the public, right? It kind of goes back to the, the same thing with the 17 million. At this point, even in finance, we really, we talked to the, Mr. Stavanesh from Zimmerman, and he gave us different you know, proposals on what he thought but exactly what you said, you know, in that 80,000 was the evidence storage, police range. Uh, we've always felt they had a lot more room there for a municipal court that even the people who wanted the municipal court thought we don't need all the room that they're giving us. So after we select the site and really nail in the building, then we can decide, okay, what do we really need and what, you know, you want to, you do want to look into the future so you're not building another one, and, you know, it's outdated in 15 years, but on the other hand, you've got to figure out what's right, what we can afford and what's really needed. So. It goes back to what Alderman Graff said. Yeah, the 17 million's there, because we, don't, we, don't, we haven't had the, the minutiae, the detail yet to say, well, no, we only want to do 13 million, because we don't need 
$5 million worth of this, because we don't know what that is, because they haven't documented it in small detail yet for us. So as we take things out, we'll have an idea. But because of the procedure, we had to have a what limit we could possibly be bonding for. We're not bonding for $17 million. We're giving ourselves the right to bond for $17 million at some point in the future. You know, when we actually set the bonds, when we know what's going to cost, then we'll know what, what that number is going to be. But we have no idea what that is right now. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman Segali, and we're gathering information today, so um, the, part of the rules that. are no debate, but go ahead. I, I was not going to debate, okay, good. Madam Chairman. Good. I was just going to say the same thing that good. Mr. Stefan was going to say concerning that was not put in, that was included in the 80,000 was the was the shooting range and the evidence storage. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is 10.15. Let's have a 15-minute break. See you back here, whoever wants to be back here in 15 minutes. Okay. Listening session is again in order. We are at the council chambers listening to citizens give us their views, their opinions regarding the site selection for the police station. We've had a number of people give us some good information. Um, is there anyone now who would like to say something? Uh, yes. I know this gentleman, Lee Montemayor. Would you give us your name and address? We are on television, so please speak into the microphone. Thank you. Uh, I hadn't planned on speaking today, but there seems to be a lot of questions about misinformation and that there's not enough information out on this thing. My name is Excuse Lee Montemayor, me. Jr. Oh. I live at 1015 Logan Avenue. And I'm a member of the Friends of Sheboygan Parks. This research took me into uh, when they decided to destroy this historical site uh, and do a lot of things. There's a ton of information in a place that we share with the rest of the county. That's a public library, just a block from here. There is no excuse for not saying that you do not have ex even if you don't subscribe to cable television. A newspaper, an article that I read this morning at 2 o'clock in the morning was about the original report from the Chamber of Commerce. I got that off the website. But you can also get the same thing off the library. The library furnishes computers for you to use. There's all kind of machines there that you can go and go all the way back to the 1800s if you want to. That's how I found some documents many years ago. So there's a ton of information out there. If you really want to know the information, it's there. Instead of somebody asking you questions, I suggest that uh, the press especially is very helpful in it because when they come up with a story like that, they'll always have a little side on it. If you want to read this report, click here. That gives you every report that's been brought to this council, except the ones that have gone through the closed sessions. There are no minutes in closed sessions. Okay. So out of a, approximately 80 meetings that I've heard about for so many years, I can only find 46, which are all in this book right here, and about 37 of those were closed. Now the reports, they're from the, they're from, from the original Chamber of Commerce, the Kimmy report, and the report that our staff just did, uh, the Moy report, and the one that just was done by our own in staff here in the city, are all in this paper. All you got to do is ask for it. You can either do it if you have a computer, you can do it through, through there, or you can go to the library, <coughs> use our computers, it belongs to all of us. Okay, now we get to the sites. We've made it. Uh, police station since so I moved to the city in 1964. Since then, we've done a ton of things in this city. So the improvement of this city is great. But the one thing we haven't built was a police station. This thing was obsolete when I moved here. It's still obsolete. It does not make sense to build another station that's too small for expanded services. 
you're building an obsolete station is what you're doing. <coughs> now that the 23rd Street site, I mean the uh, Sheridan Park site is off the books, which was my main goal, but this police site seems to be the big drawback here because either they don't want to share a site with the county or we don't want to share the site with the county. Eventually what's going to happen is that the state will mandate that you do it. You won't have any choice. You have to have a site that's big enough to expand. If you want my personal opinion as to where this thing should go, I say put it out by the detention center. That would save a lot of gas. The, the, the uh, fiber optics is an obsolete system. Everything now is done through cyberspace and cameras, which our police don't have on their cars, as I understand. That's how far, we're, how far behind we are on that. We're willing to put a taser in a policeman's hand, but we don't have a camera showing why he's using it. This is the type of thing that we're way behind on. We need to look a little, a little past our nose into the future and what's going to happen 50 years from now. We can't go east. We cannot build west. They don't want us in the north part of the city, so the only place we can go is south. I therefore think building the station even further than George or the Broadway sites is even better. We do own some land out at the industrial park, not very much that's left out there, but we already own it. My second site, my choice would be the 23rd Street because as a part of this county, we already own that land. The contamination issue is mute because there's tons of grants out there to cover such issues like this. I'll give you a good example of this, the Blue Harbor Project. We clean most of that up with federal grants. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Montemayor. Yes, hello. Would you sign in and give us with your name and address and also tell us your name and address. Okay, David Franzen, 2414 North 31st Street. I'd just like to say that in recent memory, we've built how many new firehouses, one on the north side, one on the south side, and there's talk about building one on the far south side. We've expanded uh, South Business Drive. We're remodeling Michigan Avenue. And as a taxpayer, I can't understand what seems to be the problem with the police department. We seem to have money for all these other projects, and as soon as you talk police department, everybody goes, we can't do it. School board had a referendum on new schools, what, a year ago? We've got new schools going up, projects going up. I think the people of Sheboygan, no matter where you put this police department, We'll live with it. A year after it's built, there's not going to be a discussion anymore where, where it should have been or where it could have been. It's going to be there. And I think the longer we keep delaying, prices are going to go up. I think somebody, whether it's on, through a referendum, through the board, find a site, build it, and get it over with. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Franzen. Good morning. Could you give us your name and address? Sure. Good morning to the Common Council Mayor. Uh, John Berner, 1919 Broadway. <coughs> uh, 
Everybody has good points here this morning, and all of them should be weighed. To project the costs on a building, it's hard to do today because if you've got China, we got concrete that's going to China, our steel is going to China, our scrap steel is going to China. So it's pretty hard to project what a building's going to cost because uh, nobody seems to know. And every time you have uh, flooding or something on the West Coast or a disaster in Florida, that's more building costs. Supplies go up. Once in a while, you go and try to find uh, plywood. It, it's supply and demand. It goes to wherever the most people want it. So I can see extending what a projected police station would cost because uh, there's no guarantee what the price is given in one month, the next month it's going to be there. It could be higher. And uh, another point is uh, we look at Sheraton Park as historic site. Camp Randall, the field there was basically a historic site. It was uh, fairgrounds, a uh, park, and then later during the war, it was a training space for the, the armies there during the Confederate and Union War. And later on became a stadium. Uh, but it's still remembered. I look at Sheridan Park, it is a memory. Our police station is a memory here. The city hall is a memory here. And uh, historical site, you can make a historical site and preserve it by building something like a police station on it. We're talking now of a smaller police station. Um, I'm not happy with Sheridan Park being a location, but looking at all the different things that have come in front of this common council, it still turns around and becomes a number one site, even though you took it off the road. So to say 23rd Street, and Mr. Montmire said the state someday might project that we're going to have to share everything or part of everything. That's looking into the future and seeing government, uh, you can't base the future on what government does. Not in my lifetime. I think things the way our government is so far in debt, no. You're talking about two different people, the police, sheriff, got state patrol too. It would be nice to have them all in one building. But they work different areas, they do things different, their training's a little different. One deals with, with areas in the county, the others deal with the city. State troopers deal with highway, and their training is a little different. They have a basic training that fits all of them, but their responsibilities are different. So I don't know how you can project everybody in one location. This is gonna be a hard decision for you people. And uh, 17 million to people is a lot of money, a lot of money to be spent. And now you're talking about downsizing. Before, when it was in Sheridan Park, you needed more area. Uh, <laughs> I just don't know what to say. Uh, both, both are hard, you know, how can you make a decision? Each one has their point of view of each one or the other. But shared services, I don't know. I, I can see they're sharing services now, and basically that's about all they're going to share. There is never going to be sheriff and police station together. I, I don't believe it'll ever work. Communication system, I don't see together. That is completely different. Two areas, they're basically doing the same thing, but it's different. Uh, and an agreement with the county, they said that was an agreement. That was a tentative agreement because 14th Street was still up in the air. 
It was an agreement. It was a tentative agreement. It's no different if I go into a car dealership and say, yeah, that's fine. I'll shake your hand and I'll be back to sign the paper. If I don't come back to sign the paper, it doesn't mean I own that car. That was a tentative agreement. If I change my mind, I don't have to go back. So it was just a tentative agreement. A handshake does not make agreement. I don't think that would hold up in any court of law. It would. I watched Judge Trudy. <laughs> mm. So basically, uh, good luck. I, there's a lot of people with different views. And I think the, the people in Sheboygan should have an input. I don't like organizations like the citizens of Sheboygan because that's a group, a group of, say, maybe a tenth of the population speaking out for the population. I wish more people here would, would get involved, get up here and talk. And it's to a point like this gentleman just said, just build the thing. People are kind of fed up. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Varner. Listening session, need input? are hoping for citizen input on police station site selection. Good morning. Good morning. Could you sign in with your name and address and tell us your name and address? First of all, I'd like to apologize for my appearance. I didn't intend to come here this morning. You look wonderful. I, uh, I'm dressed for work at home. So. <laughs> my name is Carl Adi, presently a county board supervisor. May we have your address, please? 1440 South 22nd Street. Thank you. For those of you who have followed my political career, I think this is one of the very, very few times that I appeared before uh, the committee of the whole or the council. The only time I remember is when I appeared to ask the city to support the building of the band shell. And uh, at that time, uh, I spent five years of my life every Friday night meeting with the committee trying to raise the money to pay for the band shell. Unfortunately, and it still bothers my conscience today, we ended up $2,200 short. So I had to come back to the council and ask them if they would pick up that $2,200, which they did. And after being at the band concert uh, Wednesday night and the concert last night, uh, I thank the mayor, Perez, and uh, previous mayors for continuing to support the music in our, our city. I think that band shell has paid for itself time and time again in what is provided to our community. Uh, I spent 19 years in the legislature, uh, 16 years on the county board, 20 years as a police and fire commissioner. So I've, I've been involved in politics in one way or another for a long, long time. I didn't really want to get involved in this issue, but I think there are some issues that have to be addressed. I do not think Sheridan Park was a place to put the police station. I know the police, the firemen have talked to me. Uh, they, they don't agree, they, they like that. I don't think there's an ideal place. And yet, every place in Sheboygan, there's not a place in Sheboygan where you can't get from one part, of, from that area to the next part of the city in less than five minutes, no matter where you put the police and fire, or, or, or fire stations. So I don't think that's really the main issue. I think the issue has to be the concern of the taxpayers. I know from being on the county board for all these years that the county has talked for years about moving the highway department to a more central location. And so as you look at the long range planning for the city of Sheboygan, I think that whole county property can be utilized at some time for shared services. We're talking about the uh, record storage. We're talking about uh, communications. And I, for one, can't understand why we can't have a separate communications, communications center for the entire county. To me, it's, it's probably not going to save a lot of money, but it's going to save some money. It stands to reason one unit is going to be less cost, costly than two units. 
I think we got to get our, our pride out of the way, our uh, biases out of the way, and uh, let's do what's right for the taxpayers. Uh, you've got the uh, highway department office buildings uh, that could be utilized, probably for communications, probably for record storage. I don't know how close you want the record storages to uh, the courthouse, uh, whether that makes any difference. But I think long range planning, it seems to me like the Highway 23 or the uh, 23rd Street site is a logical place to consider. I'm not saying this is the only place you consider, but to me, I like to think I look at common sense approaches to problems. And a common sense approach to me is to take a very serious look at, at the 23rd site, not only for the police station itself, but for ancillary services that are also going to have to be provided in the future. And so that's my request to you, is that you, you take a long-range view of uh, looking at the possibility of using not just the four acres, but that whole area in a way of uh, shared services with the uh, county. And we know that the state and federal government are insisting that we do more in the way of shared services. Uh, there are going to be more mandates coming down that we do that, and I think this is a good place to start. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adi. Lots of good information coming from citizens. Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, Alderman Jim Gronk will be in charge of gathering the information from the citizens. Going north to visit my sister. Us three sisters together are traveling north for a little mini vacation to our mother's house, even though mother isn't there any longer, but that's where we're going. Madam Chairman, can I make another statement, please? Yes, of course, Mr. Montemayor. I, I did like to, to say that um, this police station is very important to this city. We need it very badly but it's, it's, it has no higher priority than our uh, public work people and all our departments in this city. You know, the guy that drives a snow plow in the winter, he's just as important as a police officer, as a fireman. You gotta remember all these jobs are applied for and our people are there by choice. We don't draft people into our police department the fire department, which are very dangerous site jobs, as well as the public works people, or the person that cleans up the beach every day. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, would you like to say anything to us? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Alderman Berg. We'll see you Monday. Can I talk? Yes, please, John. Go right okay. ahead. John Berner. Yes. There is one other thing. You know, everybody, like on Memorial Day, uh, the military, we're all appreciated of the military. The people in the military, and I was in the military, when you join up, you make certain sacrifices. And I look at being not in the military, there's sacrifices citizens have to make once in a while, whether you like them or not. And we were talking, like I said, I'm not happy with the park being chosen at one time, but sometimes a sacrifice needs to be made, just like the people serving in the armed forces. Sometimes these sacrifices are hard. The city has a lot of parks, and I'm not saying doing, do away with our parks because I think they're a very important thing. But sometimes there has to be a change in something. And it's a hard decision. I'm, I wouldn't want to make it because I'm on both sides. I see both aspects of it, do or don't do. 
And then you look at the aspect of where else? How big? We're going to look into the future. How much expansion? You can't look into the future. You can assume what's going to happen, but you can't foresee. If we all could foresee, heck, my life, I'd probably be a millionaire now. There's no way you can foresee what's going to happen. You anticipate what's going to happen. And sometimes that doesn't even work out. But I know being in the military, you do make a lot of sacrifices. You don't basically have a home. Your family moves from area to area. There's overseas duty. People at home do contribute. And I'm not saying anything, you know. But I'm saying that people, as civilians, sometimes have to sacrifice, just like pe people that are protecting people. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bartner. Mayor Perez, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I guess I better explain why I didn't have anything to say. I think that this is a session that is strictly for the public to come to the Common Council, the Committee of the Whole, and address their concerns, and perhaps even ask questions which they can get answers to later. But this is a time for the people to talk to us. So I felt that it was inappropriate for me to make comments and try to muddy the waters a little bit with my opinions or my concerns about the, the best location for, for the police site. Um, I am pleased extremely pleased, although it's a smaller crowd that I anticipated, I am extremely pleased with the people who have turned up and addressed us and shared their concerns. This is what Sheboygan is all about, is getting the community involved. So thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you, Mayor Perez. I realize I left my pen okay, here. Okay, Barbara Tuszynski, one last shot. Go ahead. May I ask, is, is this going to 11.30? That's what the paper said. Is That's going correct, to yes. However yes. long somebody wants to keep talking, huh? Yes, well, you get one more turn. Okay, because I do have a few more questions, if you would mind indulging me. And, and I, we may or may not be able to answer them. And if we're not able to, then your alderman can answer them for you. Go right ahead. Thank you. Um, I had some people voice concerns about safety of the police department and the idea that when people are brought in as suspects, they quite often interact with the public and the potential or possible victims. And I asked earlier, if there is a time frame, if a decision is made, can you give us some general idea of what they have told you? As Let's say a decision is made in three months and a site is chosen. How much more work has to be done as far as environmental testing, groundbreaking? How long does the actual process take? Do we have a rough idea? Is it around 18 months from groundbreaking? Or do we have any idea at all at this point? Is it too preliminary? Your alderman does have a tentative timetable about groundbreaking and, and hopefully completion. So, And I don't have that information in front of me right now. Okay, because I'd ask that this could be a give and take question and answer period. And I guess things have kind of changed for whatever reason that I saw the answer is just not available or my aldermen, I think my two aldermen are alder people are right here. So may I ask if they have an answer? Do you have the information with you? No. 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 Okay, so it's too preliminary. But originally I thought that with the Sheridan Park site, when they originally were discussing that, I had thought it was first um, going to be like 07 or it was even going to be completed. Okay. So I don't think we're looking at anything real soon. I mean, it's going to take a little while. OK, as long as we have some idea, because I think some people are concerned that this is just going to drag out and drag it out and drag out, and the people feel that it could not be done because we dragged it out for so long and something else comes to the forefront. Thank you. You're welcome. Alderman Graf. I just, just to add to that, uh, right now there is a petition being circulated that if that gets enough signatures, that's going to put a delay on anything that we do because we have to then, um, then if I believe it calls for a referendum on the issue, which would be at our next scheduled um, election, which would be in April of 2006. So until that referendum would be acted upon, 
our hands are tied, basically, uh, if that's the will of the people. Good morning, Angie. Your name and address? <laughs> Angie Bimel, 1822 North 5th Street, Sheboygan. I just got here at 10.30, so I don't know what happened before, but I thought this was going to be more of a, an informational meeting as far as comparing the sites and the cost of the sites and things like that. I wanted to get that kind of information because I know now this Vandervaart site was put on as one of the sites and nothing was ever men mentioned as to how much they wanted for their land. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be nice to have a comparison of all the sites as far as cost and acreage and accessibility. Is there such a thing being drawn up or? We are now, we're waiting for Zimmerman to get information back to us about the five particular sites, more details, money-wise, so forth and so on. And now our, our city engineer and our planning department have given us their information regarding perhaps cost acquisition, the land, but we're still waiting for Zimmerman, and they'll have that information to us very soon, I'm saying within a few days. So we're waiting for that information yet. Oh, okay, well then I think we can make a better decision if we get all the information as far as we, costs. We want your opinions. <laughs> okay, sign my name. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Angie Barmel. Yes, Mr. Adi. Madam Chair, I'd just like to comment. I'm opposed to referendums. You people are elected to serve us. You people have access to all the technical information that is needed. The general public does not have all that information. I think you people, based on the technical services that you have available to you, to you should make the decisions and make them in the interest of the taxpayer. Uh, there are times when referendums are uh, justified but in issues like this, I think you people, because of the technical information that is needed to make the proper decisions, are the ones that just make that decision. The general public that come to me, they, because of my background, they ask me, well, what's your opinion on the police station? They don't care one way or the other. And they haven't really looked at the issues the way you have. And I have looked at it more than most people. Uh, so I, I say, uh, if it comes to decide on referendum, I would choose that you not have the referendum if it's your choose to make, choice to make and make the decisions based on your technical inf information and knowledge. And uh, whether I agree with that or not, I will accept it because you have been elected to make that decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adi. I think the particular referendum that's going now is if they do gather the signatures, it's compulsory. We don't have a choice about having the referendum or not. I spell my name for you again, but I can only spell it once. Okay. <laughs> Ed Wachowski, we know who you are. Please Thank go you. ahead. Thank you. Regarding the referendums, as you guys brought it up, since I'm one of the people that are circ circulating that referendum uh, petition, I want to apologize to you, the City Council, for delaying any decision you may have to make regarding the police station, because obviously you're moving very swiftly. You've been talking about it now for what, two years? And we're talking about delaying it to April? You can make it November, you can make it whenever. The petition really is to give the people the opportunity to confirm your decision or to say your decision's a bad one. What's wrong with that? You know, I don't know whether you watch TV. When I was a kid, I watched TV and saw a very famous person called Lee Majors. He was the $6 million man, paid by government funds. I want to congratulate this council because you have surpassed that with one of your individuals. We now have the $17 million man on city council, okay? And that will make us famous. I want to say, just end, and I'm not going to ramble on because I have a habit of doing that, but I want you to hear this loud and clear. We cannot the citizens of this community afford 
another $17 million worth of debt and to pay for that on our taxes. A gentleman spoke here and said, doesn't care where you put that police station, it'll be forgotten in a year. No way, Jose. It's not going to be forgotten in a year because you're going to remind everybody annually, okay, when they receive their tax bill. You do whatever your leadership qualities demand that you do. But I will tell you this, and end by saying, we cannot afford, the city cannot afford another $17 million of debt. And I would love to take your credit card away from you, have Ken King come in here and explain to you what fiscal responsibility is all about. Thank you for letting me speak for the second time. Thank you, Mr. Mikowski. <laughs> Perhaps someone will quickly gather something at the John Michael Kohler Arts Center and then come over here and speak with us. Monday evening at, uh, no, there's a committee of the whole first. <coughs> oh, Monday. At Monday. Five, at 515. No, 545. 545, committee of the whole. We'll do some housekeeping and perhaps we'll have our information from Zimmerman that we can perhaps eliminate some of the sites. Perhaps. That's what we'll find out with committee of the whole at 545 on, on Monday evening. Yes, please. Go right ahead. Um, good morning. Uh, Aldermen and older persons, I should say. Uh, my name is John Molitor at 2406 North 28th Street. Thank you, Mr. Molitor, please. I'm glad you're here. I guess my concern uh, mainly is not as to exactly where the a new police station should be, but we're hearing all of this shared service business. I'm familiar with some shared services. Uh, at one time, the police department had their uh, communication system, fire department had theirs. Two older persons here that uh, are no longer with us guaranteed us a uh, million dollars in 10 years in savings. I haven't seen the first dollar. The first thing that happened is the fire department had to train the uh, communicators. After 40 hours, they walked away with their heads spinning. They said, we had no idea as to what your department does. They come, went ahead and combined it. Uh, within about three months, the eight-hour shifts went to six hour shifts for the telecommunicators. The stress level had gone so high that these people could not handle it. Even now you'll find that there's going to be calling people because it's that tough a job. We're talking, combining uh, services with the county. Uh, I don't think we have to go too far, just go 30 miles or 38 miles west one of our former aldermen uh, was a city planner, was in charge of much of what happened in Fond du Lac. Uh, they combined the sheriff and police department. Uh, if you'll go to Fond du Lac now, you'll find that the new police department is built on the north end of Main Street, separated. It didn't work. Uh, most of the things that have been brought up as far as combining services have all been tried. Uh, <clears throat> privatizing snow plowing, God, what a fiasco that was. Uh, privatizing uh, garbage collection, that type of thing. Again, things, it's all been tried and it doesn't work. So you do have some major decisions to make here but I don't think combining these places 
for the sake of saving dollars is going to work. Um, again, I'm not concerned where you put the police department, but I am concerned that you've selected a possible dump site. I can give you a very good example. When the city planner wanted to build three 15-story uh, towers in Sheboygan when he first came here. That entailed doing away with the fire station on the corner. That meant where is that going to be relocated? The only available land was 9th and Alabama Avenue. So a study was done by Miller Engineering and uh, the report came back that you hit water at six feet and you're either gonna have to pound pilings or put in a mat foundation, neither which is suitable for a large building. I had a request from one of the people on the school board as to whether we had actually done a survey. I said, yes, uh, you're entitled to it. It's a public domain and I will forward this to you complete, which I did. Two years later, the school board elected to build on that site. And then suddenly, the headline in the paper said, oh my God, we have to pound pilings and it's gonna be another three quarters of a million or just a little more. And we heard nothing from the taxpayer. So we're encumbered in a lot of things that were slipped here. I, I've spent a lot of time in this council chamber since 1960. And one evening, the uh, superintendent of schools came in and said, I would like to uh, have you uh, pass this ordinance and suspend the rules. And the aldermen looked at each other and said, what are we doing? And the individual said, we're going to build a new building. Where and what? And to suspend the rules, we don't want to do that. Well, he said, the equipment is on site for to start digging tomorrow, so I'd appreciate it if you'd move this along. But the alderman had no alternative. What are you, what are you going to do? Uh, just a sad situation and miscommunication. Who is running the city? Uh, where do the dollars go? And uh, as far as the police department, I'm sure they've got some designs and what their needs are. <coughs> uh, why we haven't been sued, as one of the previous speakers brought up, is beyond me. When you have criminals walking through your lobby to go to the bathroom, and uh, that someone hadn't gotten loose and uh, ended up uh, hurting someone who would have indeed filed a lawsuit on this. We could have built a police station much larger. So I, I think there's a lot of things that we have to take a look at, but be careful with the combining of services because it's all been tried and uh, most of it hasn't worked or it's been deleterious to all of the departments involved. And again, uh, the site that you select, I hope, is something that doesn't entail dump sites or reclamation and all of that because it does become costly and there's no guarantee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Molitor. Alderman Meyer, did you want to say something? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to ask, um, now that we're in these tentative negotiations with the county for the New Jersey Avenue land. Are, have we basically taken that site off of our list for a possible police station? Or are we, we're we just kind of all up in the area? We haven't taken that off the, okay. yet. Let's, let's hopefully, let's do that soon. Okay. Alderman Groff, yes. What, what is it, what, New Jersey Avenue? Uh, the evidence storage, the, the oh. For the, you mean for that purpose? Well, if I may, uh, the document that was being referred to shared services is in your council agenda again this 
uh, for Monday's meeting because we have to refer to, um, it's called the Law Committee of the County Board because they, um, they oversee the actions of, um, of the Sheriff's Department and so forth. So that's the committee that we'll be looking at and discussing um, sharing that facility with, um, with the, the city. And then from there it'll move to, um, they have a, um, a property committee also. Um, and I don't know the exact title of it, but um, then it has to move into that committee and so forth. So uh, it hasn't gotten to the county yet. To, that document has not gotten to the county yet. So. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Hello again, Mr. Molitor. Go my, ahead. My name hasn't changed. That's right. Uh, but again, in speaking of shared services, if uh, you consult chapters uh, 59 through 62 of the state statutes, you will find that uh, cities, counties, towns, villages all have their own individual units in the state statutes. So before you would spend a great deal of time attempting to combine services, it had best be uh, looked at by the city attorney and answer all of your questions. For instance, combining police and uh, sheriff's department. The sheriff is elected. The police chief is appointed by the police and fire commission, two completely different entities. Who's going to run it? Is that a flip of the coin? And if so, is there going to be a request to change the statute to allow that? So this involves a lot of things. And you talk about cooperation. The fire department was uh, instrumental in the mutual aid program that's in vogue now. There's 22 volunteer departments in the county and one paid department. So we put together a document that was given to the chiefs to take back to their individual councils and uh, boards to be approved as to what services would be shared. And it worked out very, very well over many years. The town of Sheboygan would come to our uh, stations, pick up uh, educational materials to take back to their people that went through their schools and different things like that. Uh, the drafting pit that was shared with other departments who were allowed to come in and draft and recertify their engines. Uh, when the federal government came out with the hazardous materials program, no one department would be able to finance that major a project. So we came up with the idea, if all of the departments would be willing to bring two of their people in for training, we could end up with at least 44 trained people who would remain on call in the event of a hazardous material incident. It worked very well. So we're, we have shared services. We have worked with them. They've worked with us. When Prangy burned, all it took was a radio call to our headquarters to bring people in. And they were there immediately. And without their help, we, we wouldn't be worried about uh, some other buildings. So shared services work out very, very well. But uh, be careful what you share and who you share them with. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Molitor. Lots of notes, now let's see if I can read them. I can, I can.
I have a feeling no one's going to show up in the next 11 minutes, but we'll be here. <laughs> Mr. Altman. <laughs> All right. The name is the same, the time has changed, that's all. Uh, we've been here a little while. Uh, I just want to elaborate again. I think because Sheboygan, I mean, we can't expand to the east. We basically can't expand to the west. We can't really expand to the north. We have some expansion we can do to the south. So what we need to do is well, most of the larger homes that are being built in the area, believe it or not, they're being built in the townships. They're not being built in the city. So what we have to do is make sure that the properties that we do have here, okay, that have potential for building, okay, that we keep those properties, okay, for building housing and so forth and use uh, properties that do not look like they have a, a great future, uh, you know, like uh, the site I said before on 13th and Penn. The only thing that's gotten there s since I can remember, uh, and I lived in that neighborhood from 1947 to 1965, the only thing that went up on that immediate property was a billboard sign. There's nothing else been put there. So, so that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Altman. It's been wonderful to see that the citizens who have come this morning, as far as I can tell, pretty much all have spoken to us and given us their opinions and their ideas. That's good to see. The more citizen involvement, the better the community. The more the citizens own the city, the better the city is. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just going to relay a message from one of the citizens that is here today. And he had a suggestion that possibly we could build on the south side and the north side where the schools are, put in satellite stations, seeing that we are having problems with liaison officer money. And um, so I'm just relaying his, his suggestion. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Oh, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Alderman uh, Burke. Uh, this is somewhat off message, but it is a commercial for. Uh, the Public Works uh, meeting, which will be held on Thursday, July 21st at 5.15, and that'll be at the Morningside Terrace Retirement Community on 1231 Eisner Avenue. We'll be conducting a regular meeting, but we'll also uh, be taking up uh, the improvement of the Eisner Avenue corridor, and there will be some time then for questions and answers from the citizens in response to plans uh, for the future of the Eisner Avenue area. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Burke. If Eisner Avenue is going to be addressed, that probably means city, county, also state? Uh, correct. Uh, Dan Hine, who is the chair of the uh, uh, town of Sheboygan, uh, has expressed an interest and will either be there himself or will have some representation. And I do believe that there is some money in the state budget that Senator Leibham has placed in there that would assist and defray some of the costs of, uh, of, the, of, of improvements. Thank you, Alderman Berg. It must be 95 degrees. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman, for turning out. I'm glad you're here, listening, taking notes, putting new, more information into your head.
Mayor Juan Perez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Never waste a minute of time. <laughs> if one of the aldermen up in front, uh, perhaps you would like to uh, inform the community that they're still able to contact their alderman with concerns uh, by means of a communication and what that, communi what, that, what the process is with respect to that communication. This is not the only opportunity that they have, nor will it be Wednesday that they have to address uh, the committee of the whole or each respective alderman. They may do so by writing a communication to them. Thank you, Alderman Perez. <laughs> Alderman, Alderman Perez promoted. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Yes, of course, citizens, contact your Alderman. They, they will take the information from you. They will give information to you if you ask them questions. Telephone, email, whatever means you have to get in touch with your Alderman. Thank you, Mayor, for reminding us. Citizens, you're invited to the council meeting on Monday, this coming Monday, day after tomorrow, 7 p.m. here in the council chambers. Come, listen, find out uh, even a little more information about what's going on. And of course, we'll be on channel 8, 7 o'clock, Monday evening, common council meeting. Committee, Committee of the whole, 545, and a whole evening of information for you. Citizen Montemayor, would you bring me that, that uh, sign-up sheet that's on the podium there? <laughs> Citizen, the most important of all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Thank you for coming and helping and listening. And Alderman, oh my goodness, Jim Groff and Alderman Eldenberg. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, and Alderman Dan Berg was here as well. Yes, thank you. And thank you. You're welcome. President of the thank Council, you. Vice thank President of the Council. Thank you for um, having this meeting. Yes, of course. We should, absolutely we should. Alderman Stefan. Uh, my cell phone tells me it's 11.30, so I'd move that we adjourn. <laughs> Thank you.